the brother of, of Vincent and also his art dealer, the, the younger brother. Um, and uh, I was first introduced to the project when Julian, in his inimitable way, uh, and I were having lunch at a mutual friend's house and he just said, I'm making this film about, uh, about Van Gogh and then didn't say anything else. He just sort of went uh, quiet, which he, do he does that sometimes, and I'm used to it now. But um, And then the next time he phoned, bizarrely, I was getting on an aeroplane with my wife to go to Arles for a holiday. She had been going to Arles for years and had found this fabulous kind of pensione and wanted to take me there for a, for a break after a movie. And, so we, we were literally boarding the plane and Julian called again and said, you know, I'd like you to play Vincent's brother. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm, out. I'm very, very, you know, thrilled to be asked, but I can't talk. And he's like, why, I'm getting on a plane. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to Arles. And he was like, nearly fell off his chair. I was like, are you kidding? We're going to be in Arles. So, yeah. For me, the intriguing thing about this film is it is a film about a painter made by a painter. This is not um, a traditional biopic in any way. This is someone who understands what it is to be obsessed with paint, color, light, form, perspective, experience that you try and put down on canvas in some way that feels real to you. That's Julian and that, that was Vincent. And so I was really excited by that because Julian's not a traditional storyteller. I feel like he's more of a, an experientialist, if that's even a word. He wants you, I think, and these are not his manifesto by any means, but I think he wants you to feel something of what it's like to experience the world as a painter. Julian, in his film Diving Bell and the Butterfly, brilliantly explored the idea of first-person narrative where we are not just sort of shown what's happening, we actually feel and experience what's happening. And that to me is a thrilling idea in filmmaking. I think in the theater, um, people are also realizing that audiences want to experience it. They don't just want to be shown or told it. And so companies like Punch Drunk and, you know, who have these kind of experiential um, theater shows, I find thrilling. And I think Julian has I came away, I watched it for the first time last night and I came away with a, I felt like I'd had the wind in my hair. Literally a strong wind in my hair. And my eyeballs when I closed them were filled with these bright greens and yellows. And that to me is as close as you're gonna to get to knowing what it's like to be a painter short of picking up a paintbrush. But I also saw a love story, a very profound and true love story between these two brothers and if you've read the letters between them which I have uh, it's one of the most moving accounts not least because Vincent didn't keep any of Theo's letters and Theo kept all of Vincent's so the letters are quite one-sided um, but from them we understand a lot about Theo but almost as if he were a ghost the fact that he died six months after Vincent makes it kind of all the more poignant because you sense Theo from the letters. They are Vincent's letters. Willem and I are 25 years apart in age and it doesn't matter at all. When, when we found this fraternal bond and Willem had already completely inhabited Van Gogh brilliantly, so to step into that world and support Willem and also have Theo support Vincent it was a very natural and logical sort of evolution. Um, and it felt very organic. Um, you know, the story is true and the story is beautiful. So if you play the story truthfully, then you play something beautiful.